Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R Kishwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take the GRE general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. That's what you need to practice for the exam. It has seven real exams. I'm right on right now on exam number two at page number 207. And about to solve problem number three. Let's take a look at it. Problem number three. Again, problem number three. The first, there are 15 quantitative comparison questions in this set, which means the first five are quite straightforward. Not that, not that this will apply to you when you take your exam, because this is from the old days when exam used to be given in paper and pencil, paper and pencil format. The exam that you will take is on the computer and is computer adaptive. The questions are not arranged in the order of difficulty when you take the exam. But anyway, here it at least it gives you some idea. We are at number three, quite straightforward problem. 84% of the people who took the exam got this question right. Let's see what it says. So they give you a circle. So this is angle X and this is angle X. And they want you to compare the length of the minor arc WX. Minor arc WX. Now what, what does that mean? Minor arc WX. Perhaps the 16% of the people who got it wrong, perhaps they had some problem with the terminology. Uh, it's very important that you get used to, the, used to the terminology that is employed in the exam. Obviously, because otherwise uh, you pretty much, uh, well, one hates to be too technical, but you're pretty much screwed without, without knowing the terms. The minor arc here from Wx, this is your W, this is your X, this is, this is, this is minor arc, this distance. Sorry, for what, I don't know what I'm doing here, W and X. X and W. This is minor arc, right here. They have to they they have to use the word minor because if you simply say arc X W and that's all you tell me arc arc X W or W X it doesn't matter whether you say arc X W or W X I might think that you're talking about this arc. So if I have a circle here and here's A and here's B. And if you're talking about arc AB, if you talk about arc AB or arc BA, I don't know whether you want whether you want me, whether you're talking about this distance or whether you're talking about this distance here. This will be considered major arc. This top one is a minor arc. So they want you to compare the length of this minor arc versus the length of the other minor arc, which they're calling YZ. Let's take a look at it then. The only concept the, the only concept that they're testing in this question is the fact that when you have two parallel lines, when, when you have two parallel lines and it's intersected by a third line, this angle that you see there, this angle that you see there is same as this angle. See if you can go back. I should have actually looked it up before I start taping this question here. There were there were a couple of occasions where I did a very thorough job on explaining this concept of a parallel line intersecting with the intersected by a third line, and different kind of angles that we uh, that we get and the sum and so forth. See if you can see if you can uh, go back in my clips and if you can actually find something. Let me see if I can quickly, very quickly find one or two at least. Yes, I don't see anything on page number. 123, just give me one second, I should have done this ahead of time. There you go. I think if you go back to problem number 3 on page 135, number 3 on page 135, watch, watch the clip. So if you're searching for this particular question, just type in GRE-10E for 10th, 10th edition, page, page 135-QC number 3, and watch that and you will see I did some work of a pair line over there but perhaps that would help.
But anyway, this angle equals this angle. And therefore, this angle here that you see there equals that angle. They tell you that. They're, they're both axes. They tell you. And if the actually here, I didn't have to make a fuss about it. I just realized that they actually tell you that these two angles are equal. This is x and this is x. Well, if the angles are equal, if the angles are equal, then the arc that faces this angle, which is this arc, has to equal the arc that faces this angle. Because these angles are equal. That's all. The answer is C. They, they both the arcs are equal. The answer is C. That's all. So which is probably, as I said before, which is probably why only why 16% of people missed it, even though 84% got it right, but by the same token, 16% missed it. And people who missed this question, most likely they did not miss it because they had trouble solving it or they couldn't solve it because it was too complicated. The problem is quite straightforward. They were just simply not familiar with the terminology. Anyway, let's move on to number four. Question number four. Let's see what he says. Number four says, point two or three times 10 raised to second power and 2.03 raised to tenth. Well the very first thing I'm going to do is, very first thing I'm going to do is, 10 appears on both sides. This is a multiple of 10, this is a multiple of 10. I'm going to divide, I'm, I'm not going to say both sides of the equation because it is not an equation. I'm going to, but if the same quantity appears in both the columns, that quantity plays no role. There was no role whatsoever. So for example, if I ask you, uh, for example, if I ask you which one is bigger, 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9 plus 13 versus uh, uh, 5 plus 9 plus 3 plus 12 plus 7, if I ask you which quantity is bigger, well, since, since 7 appears in both of these columns, it plays no role. Since 3 appears in both of these columns, it plays no role. I don't have to waste my time comparing them. Uh, and that's how we do it. So basically we have to compare these three numbers versus those three numbers. Rest does not play, rest, does, rest does not play any role. This 12 appears here, I can cross out this 13 to make it a 1. This 5 appears here, cross this out and make, make that a 1. See this cross out 5 and let's cross out 5, this became 1 and this 1 goes with that one. So basically I'm comparing Oh, well, this was this was a fluke. Uh, this was uh, this was quite insane. That's that's my nine. That's my handwriting nine there. It turns out that they are equal. Oh, I didn't. It just it just had turned out that way. But that's what that is. They are equal. These two quantities are equal to each other. But notice how I did it. I did not sit there and waste my time adding them up. These are not quantitative computation. These are not called computation. They are called comparison. It is a very important concept to understand. It's a simple concept and yet a lot of the people during the exam lose track of that fact. These are called quantitative comparison, not computation. One is, I could, I could have actually sit there and I could have actually uh, uh, sat down there and had, uh, had added up all these numbers and added up all this number and I could have told you that the two quantities are equal. And if I had done that, I would have missed the point. That wasn't the bloody point of it. They don't want to see how quickly you can add. They just want to see how quick you are in comparing two things. That's all. Anyway, enough of the talk here. So very first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to get rid of this 10. Get rid of this 10 and this 100 becomes 10. You see 10 squared is 100, that 100 now becomes 10. So basically I'm, I'm comparing 0 0.203 times 10 versus 2.03. Well, since it's times 10, you have, to, you have to take this decimal, move it one place, it becomes 2.03. That's what this becomes. And this is also 2.03. So the answer is C. That's all. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to work with me, if you wish to hire my services for personal private tutoring, or if you wish to find a solution manual to this problem from me, in either case, go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P prep, F-O-R-4-G-R-E.com and send me an email. Alright? Thanks.